Welcome to the story of copper from the amazing Gem and Mineral Museum. We're going to start our story with a couple of large glacial float nuggets from the U.S. state of Michigan. Those you can see in the upper part of this particular image. Those two big chunks right there, those are actually copper nuggets. They weigh about 17 pounds apiece and they were brought down by glaciers into the U.S. state of Michigan from somewhere up in Canada where they were actually brought up from the earth in a, in a magma into a lava flow. You can see some of the natural copper formations and native copper in the front. But when copper interacts with water and starts weathering down and it gets hydrated and, and weathered down, it actually turns into a carbonate and forms malachite, which is what you're seeing here. You'll notice that strange looking formation in the center is actually a natural formation of copper turning into the green malachite. And on the two edges you can see the uh, visions of the natural malachite where the copper kind of bubbles up and interacts with the water and turns into the malachite gem material. One interesting specimen that we have here is actually what we call copperfied wood. This is a piece of wood that would normally be petrified wood, but because there was far more copper in the ground where this was forming up, there was far more copper than silicone, and the copper actually took the place of the cellulose of the wood, and it copperfied the wood, if you will. It caused the copperfied wood as opposed to petrified wood. It's just simply full of copper rather than silicone. But as the copper weathers down further from the malachite, it will actually turn into azurite, the blue stone. And you can see this, the, the large chunk that's there in the middle towards the upper part of the picture. You can see the green and the blue in that particular piece and in the lower section you've got the blue nodules that are actually the blue azurite that are forming up on the green malachite. This is a further weathering of the copper from the malachite into the azurite and creating even more gemstones from the copper weathering. And if the copper is weathering down in an environment that's heavy with aluminum and phosphorus, we will get a phosphate and actually the copper will turn into turquoise and this is how we get turquoise and also why turquoise is often found in conjunction with copper mines such as in Nevada and Arizona and many places around the world. We find turquoise in the same vicinity as copper mines because it's part of the breakdown and weathering of copper into the phosphate due to the aluminum and phosphorus that's, uh, that's in the soil itself. We've collected turquoise specimens here from many places and had some donated to us for many mine locations around the world to make a wonderful collection for you to come visit. And of course no story of copper and gemstones would be complete without talking about the Oregon Sunstone. The copper bearing Oregon Sunstone is, the, is unique in the world. It's the only place in the world where these feldspar crystals deep in the earth in a magma chamber were down there with a whole lot of copper and the copper actually diffused into the crystals and when the magma came up and came out as a lava flow it actually brought these beautiful gemstones to the surface and we're able to find Oregon sunstone. Here's a picture of one just to give you an idea of how much copper is in here and just what a unique formation this is to find. This is an Oregon sunstone from Plush, Oregon and as we look at this and start looking at a, a higher magnification you can easily see the copper grains that are inside this gemstone. It's actually a rather astounding formation. The only place in the world that's been documented to offer copper bearing feldspar as gemstones. And here's a high magnification look and you can actually very clearly see the little grains of copper that are throughout this feldspar crystals. And this is why we call it the Oregon Sunstone because it shines like the sun. Copper is a very unique element and mineral it's not only just for pennies and coins, it also provides some beautiful artwork as you can see here. But more importantly, it's a very important resource for us, not just for industrial purposes like electrical wires, but it also is a very important resource for gemstones, gems and minerals. There are the gems and minerals that you have seen here and, and others that are directly reliant on copper for their color and formation. We have these at the Amazing Gem and Mineral Museum. This has been the display for the month. Each month we're going to tell a story of a new element, a new mineral, a new gemstone. Every month we'll tell a new story and we certainly invite you to come by and visit us here in Helotus, Texas or visit our website at amazingmuseum.com or contact us at the info at amazingmuseum.com.